Welcome to this time of worship. I'm Pastor Corey Turnpenny, pastor here at the Whitney Point United Methodist Church. Wherever or whenever you're joining us from, we hope you feel connected and encouraged as we worship together in spirit through the gift of technology. Let us know that you're worshiping with us. Whenever you're watching this video, like the video. You can share it to invite your friends to join us for this time of worship too. And if it's your first time worshiping with us, let us know in the comments so we can welcome you and let you know that we're so glad you're here. And I pray our church can help you stay connected and feel encouraged. If you're not on our email list, type the word email into the comments now and we'll send you a message to add you to our email list because there's lots of great information there every Friday about everything going on in the church, including information on our Zoom Bible studies and our next free takeout dinner is this coming Thursday. We are serving baked chicken, potatoes, broccoli, and cauliflower and brownies for dessert. So you can place your order online or call the church by Tuesday. After our worship goes live each Sunday, we join together on the Whitney Point United Methodist Church Facebook page for a live coffee hour chat at 11. Hope you can join us for that. And at this time, I invite you to greet each other and answer this week's welcome chat question, which is, what's the best job you've ever had? Go ahead, put your answer in the chat now as we do some singing. We are the vineyard you have planted. Tend our leaves and wild branches. We abide, we abide in you. We abide, we abide in you. Fruit growing from our strength and labor rain on us with grace and favor we abide we abide in you we abide we abide in you where shall my soul find living water Apart from you we bear no fruit Oh, plant my feet down by the river We abide, we abide in you We are the vineyard you have planted Tend our leaves and wild branches. We abide, we abide in you. We abide, we abide in you. Where shall my soul find living water? Apart from you we bear no fruit. Oh, plant my feet down by the river we abide we abide in you we abide we abide in you we abide we abide in you I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. 
I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna sing so God can use me Anytime, anywhere, Lord, anytime. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide, draw the circle. Draw the circle wide No one stands alone We stand side by side Draw the circle Draw the circle wide Draw the circle Draw the circle wide Draw the circle Draw the circle wide No one stands alone We stand side by side Draw the circle Draw the circle wide Draw the circle wide Draw it wider still Let this be our song no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, no, we stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. God, who is our peace, Guide us to wholeness by your word, so in all we do, we might bring wholeness to our world. Amen. Our Bible reading for today is Romans 12, verses 1 and 6 through 16 from the message. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. 
Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for God. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what God wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help, don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times, pray all the harder. Help needy people. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies, no cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Well, hello, kids. Today we are talking about another role that most people play at some point in their life. And that's what we're doing for this time. We're talking about all the different roles we might have. We talked about being a Christian, and last week we talked about being a citizen. And this week we're talking about being an employee, which means a worker at a job. And probably most of you have not been an employee yet. But right now, your job is to be students. That's what kids' work is, is to learn and grow and learn all that you need to know to someday become an employee, to, to do work in the world and to be a good, helpful person that, that brings something good, whether big or small, to our world. So that's what you're doing now, and being a student is important work. And we often think about being lifelong learners as we get older, that we want to keep learning even when we are working at a job or even after we retire from a job. We want to keep learning just as you are right now. So your job is to be a student. and. We are thinking about how can we bring our faith? How can we keep making sure that we're following Jesus even in our role as an employee or for you as a student? And so I think it's pretty similar to kind of what we talked about last week when we talked about being citizens. 
We are all here citizens of the United States. We're Americans. But if we follow Jesus, we're also citizens of God's kingdom. And that comes before whatever country we might live in on earth. That's our top citizenship, our first place that we want to think about how can we be citizens of God's kingdom. So it's the same way. You might someday work in a job and have a boss, or right now as a student, you have a teacher at school, right? And maybe there's a teacher's aide in your classroom. So there's a helper, there's a teacher, then there's the principal, right? And hopefully you don't have to go talk to them and get in trouble. There's, there's sort of these levels of people that are responsible for helping you do your job, which is to learn. And then of course, maybe above the principal is your parents. They're ultimately in charge of you and what you do with your life. They are responsible for taking care of you and helping you learn and grow and making sure you get to school and, and you get to all the places that will help you stay healthy and safe. But even above your parents, there is God. And if we are claiming to be followers of Jesus, if, we are, if our, we're going to live out our faith, then God is our top boss. We might have all these other people who help us, but ultimately we want to make sure that whatever we're doing when we're, when we're following the instructions of our teachers and our principal and our parents, that above all of that, we're also following God's instructions. And we can do that simply by remembering the stories from the Bible, reading our Bible, getting our, our parents to help us with that, uh, looking at to our parents and others in the church, you know, coming to church, talking about God, getting those reminders of, of what God hopes for us. And then when we go to school or when we go to a job someday, we can make sure that whatever we do, whatever work we're doing, however we're studying or learning at school, that we're doing it in a way that would make God happy. And so I want you to remember that as you're going to school this week, that you can go to school and do things there that will make God happy. You can, you know, respect your elders, your teachers, and all the staff there. You can be kind to them and to your fellow students. So follow God this week as you do your work of being a student. Would you please pray for me now as I pray for you? Let us pray. God, who is our peace, make your truth known to us this day and forever. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are continuing with our series on piecing it together looking at how we can bring peace and wholeness to our lives and to the world by incorporating our faith into all the various roles that we play. And this series is, of course, part of our larger year-long focus on our everyday faith. We started this focus back in July to help us connect every aspect of our lives, from the mundane to the magnificent, with the beliefs that we claim as Christians. The work we do as followers of Jesus isn't done just at church or on Sundays. We want to infuse all of our actions, big and small, with the ultimate goal of following the way of Christ. And way back in July, we read the same verse from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. That's where the theme for this year came from, when he says, take your everyday, ordinary lives and place them before God as an offering. And in fact, we've heard this verse a few times in the past six months now, 
Not only because I admit it's one of my favorites, but because it's just so chock full of important and practical instructions, especially when it comes to connecting every aspect of our lives to our faith. So this week, as we continue looking at the different roles we play, we're considering our role as employees. And I recognize not everyone may formally be an employee, but usually most people have been an employee at one time or another. And whether you're retired or self-employed or own your own company, most of us still have some kind of work role. Most of the retired folks I know work longer hours than they ever did in their jobs. Whether it's caring for grandkids or volunteering or caring for a home or animals, most of us still have a work-life aspect to our lives as a whole. So how can we bring our faith to this aspect of our lives? Well, I think it's similar to how we can bring our faith to our role as citizens, as we talked about last week, by ultimately following Jesus as our boss. As Christians, we claim Jesus is Lord, which means we're giving him ultimate authority over our lives. So no matter who we work for, Jesus is our first boss. And his instructions and example should guide us in the work we do, no matter what that might be. Whatever job we have, we can act justly and mercifully. And Paul gives us some great practical advice on what it looks like to live and work with Jesus as our ultimate boss. He reminds the Romans to basically stay in their lane, right? Don't don't overreach your power or try to take over. Do your job, but use whatever power you do have to help others. In any work we do, we have to work with other people at some point. No one is an island. So Paul reminds us, play our part. We have a purpose and we are part of a larger team. We can support our leaders and lead when needed and generally be a team player. We, we will thrive when we help the team thrive. And I would say we don't have to plaster our cubicle with religious art or blast Christian music from our office all day long. Our coworkers will know we are Christians by our love, right? By how we treat those we serve and work with. And when we bring our faith with us into our roles at work, we have seen what an impact that can make, no matter what line of work you're in. About a month ago, I saw a story on the Humans of New York Facebook page. And it just, struck me as the perfect example of how we might piece together our faith with our work. Now, Humans of New York is a project started by Brandon Statton in 2010 that features interviews and photos of thousands of people started on the streets of New York City and now he's gone around the world with this interview photography project. And the post I saw had a younger man sitting uh, in a small grocery store. You could see produce around him. And this is the story that was shared with that image. It said, I've never seen the man read a book in his entire life. One time I saw his high school repo report card and the only class he got an A in was gym. His parents never had any money so right after school, he got a job stocking produce at the local food market. The owners realized he had a knack for numbers, so they promoted him to manager at the age of 20. He met my mother at the store. They got married, and not long afterwards, I came along. For as long as I can remember, the store has been a huge part of his life. He works six days a week. He saved enough money to buy out the other owners. 
But it was never an obsession or anything. Whenever he was home with us, he was fully present. His family was his sweet spot. He never needed to hang out with his buddies. He was madly in love with my mom, and his idea of a good time was spending time with his kids. I used to think that dad was just a family man, but as I got older, I realized that his family extended to the folks who worked for him. Nobody ever leaves our store. We have 15 managers and the newest one started 10 years ago. Our employees stick around because my dad has always taken care of them. He has their back through divorces, parenting issues, health problems. One of our managers has a brain condition and my dad's the one who drives them to the appointments. Sometimes he's too generous. He's been burned before, but he kind of doesn't care. He just keeps pushing in all his chips for other people. The man has a handwritten note from Mother Teresa because of all the food he's given away. If you came into the store today, you'd find him stocking produce, just like he was doing when he was 18. He loves to tell people that he works for his children and that we can fire him at any time. Everyone thinks he's joking, but he's not. On the day my dad got full ownership of the store, he signed it right over everything to his four kids. I was in the room when it happened. His lawyers and accountants tried to talk him out of it. They told him, you're giving everything away. You'll never be able to stop working. And he replied, I was poor when I started this thing, and that's how I plan on leaving. Now you might have noticed in this incredible short story that this man never mentioned his father's faith or beliefs but of course he didn't need to we can clearly tell from how he put people over profits how he showed compassion and kindness to everyone how he didn't get consumed by the job but infused himself into it and how he gave it his all and gave it all away knowing that he can't take it with him i pray we might all do likewise so that, that no matter what job we have or what work we do we can live and work with god as our boss day in and day out amen Forth in thy name, O Lord, I go, my daily labor to pursue, the only the resolve to know. In all I think, or speak, or do, the task thy wisdom hath assigned, Oh, let me cheerfully fulfill In all my works thy presence find And prove thy good and perfect will Thee may I set at my right hand Whose eyes might in most substance see on at thy command and offer all my works to thee for the delightfully employ whate'er thy bounteous grace hath given and run my course with even joy and closely walk with thee to hand. For our stewardship minute this morning, I wanted to let you know about a project that the missions team is going to be working on in the month ahead. We see there's a need for children who are not able to do as much of the fun stuff maybe that they're usually looking forward to doing. 
And there's also, of course, our older shut-ins um, who are seeing even fewer people than normal. And so we had the thought of providing our kids with some craft supplies that they could decorate a Valentine's card and give them the envelope to put it in the mail and send it to one of our shut-ins here within our church. So if you have kids in your life that you're able to see and be with right now and you would like to have them help create a Valentine card for one of our uh, shut-ins here at the church, let us know and know that we'll be reaching out to you if, if you're in our directory and you have uh, kids listed in your home will be sending you a note to see if you're willing to participate in this uh, fun cross intergenerational uh, meal project. So we hope that it will give the kids something to do and it'll brighten the day of some of our um, seniors. So stay posted for that. And if you would like to help with the missions team in any way, Sherry Scully is leading the team now and um, we are meeting monthly so you can contact her and see if there's ways you would like to get involved or just be a part of our meetings to help us come up with new ideas and ways we can continue to serve our community in this new world. As we come together for prayer, we of course give thanks for all of the tithes and offerings, all of the donations you continue to send in, whether online or mailing in. We are able to continue serving our community and doing all that we still are able to do with connecting through online worship and Bible studies and um, all of this that we that we do is because of your faithful giving so thank you and we pray god's blessing over all these gifts that they would be used to do god's work in the world and as we come together for prayer we are celebrating the joys of tanner smith's birthday as well as emily barchi's birthday and nancy summer's birthday which is coming up this week. And we have prayer requests for Mike and his family as his brother John with muscular dystrophy passed away this past week. So prayers for them. Katie asked for prayers for her grandniece Kara as she is going through some healing and needing our prayers and support. We have continued prayers for Lori, who had a hand surgery, but is was on Bible study that same night and doing well. Continued prayers for Enid, who is home from the hospital, but prayers for her continued healing. And of course, we continue to hold Nancy in our loving care and surround her in love and light as she continues to move nearer to transitioning to the next life. So let us join our hearts together in prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you for the calling you've put on our lives, for leading us to the work we do. And we pray that you would help us do that work in a way that honors you. We pray for all of those who are in need of your healing. Pray for Mike and his family. We lift Kara to your loving care. We continue to pray for Lori's healing and for Enid. And we lift Nancy to your loving light. We 
bring each of us the healing you know we need and help us work together to bring justice and peace to our world. Help us care for each other to live with you as our ultimate authority, leading us in all we say and do. Continue to guide us as your church. We pray that we would continue to be able to serve our community in your name. We ask most of all that you help us trust you. Help us trust that you're with us always, that you forgive us, and that you will keep on providing for all we need. All these prayers of our hearts, we lift to you together as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For our homework this week, do something kind for a coworker, whether current or former or someone you work with in some capacity, even if it's not an official job anymore. And remember that whether we are gathered or scattered, God is with us. In hope and in despair, God is with us, now and always. God is with us. Go in peace. Amen. We saw the Christmas star from a hill above our house as Jupiter and Saturn were aligned. The evening sky was clear. There was nothing in the way. We gazed at it in wonder for a while. In that moment of perfection, in that heavenly conjunction, there was wholeness in the darkness of the night. So we stood there in the silence, and we offered our thanksgiving for the darkness, for the wonder, for the light. Back here on planet Earth, things are broken all around. From illnesses, from violence and mistrust. We cry out in our pain, we are tempted to despair. We ache to build a land that's kind and just. How we yearn for that completeness, for the simple, holy sweetness of a world where right relations are restored. But we fumble and we struggle, or it seems like too much trouble, and we learn to live with hatred and with war. that still remains must be in the work we do in how we face our fear and play our parts the gift we each can bring is our passion for shalom the christmas star that's burning in our hearts 
As the days are growing longer, may our need for peace grow stronger. May it come to birth as day is born from night. May our bodies and our minds, like the planets, be aligned till the broken is made whole throughout our lives. Ooh.